In the last two episodes, we learned about the load function inside tQuery Ajax. And in this episode, we're going to learn about the get function and the post function. So when it comes to getting data from a server using Ajax, we have a couple of different functions we can use in order to do something very specific. So in the last episodes, we talked about the load function, which basically takes data from a server and inserts it inside your website somewhere, like inside a dip box or something. Now, when it comes to the get and post functions, we can do something different. So let's say I want to just get data from a server without actually inserting it inside my website. I can use the get function inside Ajax to do so. Now, if I wanted to, I could also take the data and insert it inside my website if I wanted to, but the get function inside Ajax allows for us to do more things with our data other than just inserting it inside the website. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys an example of this in just a second. Now, the second function we have is something called a post function. And this one basically allows for users inside the website to interact with the website and do something using Ajax. To give you guys an example of this so you guys can actually understand what I mean, let's say we have a place where you can create a user account inside the website where we can allow users to type in a username and a password. If I want to notify the user that a certain username has already been taken before he clicks submit, we can do it using Ajax. Or another example could be if I wanted to let him type a password for this user, I can notify him if the password is strong enough to be accepted as a legit password inside the website. So we can do a bunch of things using the get and post functions inside Ajax. So now let's actually go ahead and do an example using the get function inside Ajax. So if we were to go inside my website here, you guys can see right now I have a button that says click me to get data and I also have a paragraph that has an ID set to test. So what I want to do here is using the script up here, tell my website to fetch some data and insert it inside this paragraph down here when I click this button here. And we're gonna do that using a get function. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create the actual document or the data that I want to get from somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new document. I'm gonna save it inside my server where I have my front page. I'm gonna save this one as something like test.txt. And again, it doesn't have to be a text document. It can be all sorts of documents such as HTML files, JavaScript files, PHP files, or like we do here at text documents. So you can have all sorts of documents with data inside of it that we can get using the get method. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this one inside my root folder. And I'm gonna go ahead and type some kind of text in here. So I'm gonna say, this is some random data. Gonna save it. Then I'm gonna go back inside my index file and inside my script tags, I'm gonna go ahead and start out by saying that we want to wait with actually loading the jQuery code till after everything else inside the website has loaded. So we're gonna say we have a selector and inside the selector, we want to write documents. Then after we want to say dot ready, parentheses, semicolon. Then inside the parentheses, we're gonna say function, parentheses, curly brackets. And then inside the curly brackets, we just need to include the jQuery code. So the first code I'm gonna include here is a selector. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the actual button down there and say once we do actually click it, something needs to happen inside the website. So I'm gonna say we have a button, dot click, parentheses, semicolon, and inside the parentheses, I'm gonna say we have a function that needs to run when we do actually click the button. And then inside the curly brackets, we want to use the get function inside Ajax. So we want to say we have a dollar sign dot get parentheses and then inside the parentheses we have two different parameters one is being the actual document we want to load in the data from which right now we call test.txt so we're going to go ahead and say we have text.txt inside a pair of double quotes or single quotes then afterwards we're going to say comma space and then we can add a second parameter now this one is actually optional, but since we do actually need to use it in most cases, we're gonna go ahead and use it in this episode. So the second parameter in here actually returns the data from text.txt and also tells us the status of the actual get method. So let's say I want to both have the data and the status, I can say function, parentheses, curly brackets, because we have two pieces of data in here, we have the actual data and the status. So I can actually include the data inside my function as a parameter, comma, and say we also want to have the status, like so. And then inside the function down here, we can actually tell it what to do with the data we got from text.txt. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell it to insert the data inside our text paragraph down here called ID test. So I'm going to say we have a selector, parentheses, then I'm going to go and say double quotes, hashtag test, because I want to select the test down there. And then I want to insert some kind of HTML. So I'm going to say we have the create HTML function, which basically just inserts HTML inside whatever we chose inside the selector. And inside the HTML parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and write data. So right now we're just getting the data variable up here, which is the actual data we get from the actual get request and insert it inside a paragraph down here. Now, if I want to, we don't have to use the status up here, but if I want to, I can actually go ahead and notify myself if this actually worked or not. So if I wanted to, I could actually go down and say we want to alert parentheses, semicolon, the actual status of this get request. So we can actually let ourselves know if this actually succeeded or failed. Now, before we check if this actually works, I'm going to go ahead and correct a small mistake I wrote here. Right now, I wrote text.txt. It is actually test.txt I called my document. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that and then go inside my browser, refresh, and then click the button. And as you guys can see, we now get a success message here that says that this is actually run correctly. Then when I click OK, I get the data. So this is how we can get data using a get method inside jQuery Ajax. And again, basically we just did the same thing as using the load function inside Ajax. But I want to point out that we can actually do whatever we want with the data that we get from the documents using the get method, whereas using the load method, we just basically load in the data and insert it inside our document like we did here. So we can actually do a bunch more things when it comes to getting the actual data besides loading it inside our documents. So now let's actually go ahead and create something using the post function inside Ajax. So if I were to go ahead and delete everything we have inside our jQuery code here, except for the document.ready, we can actually go ahead and create something using the post method. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and delete the button down here and allow for the user to actually do something inside the website. So I'm going to go ahead and create an input instead of an actual button. This is going to be a text input. And inside the name, we're going to go ahead and call it something like name. Now, basically what I want to do here is when the user actually goes into the website and writes something inside the input, I want to check if the name or the username that he's typing inside the input field already exists inside my server, meaning that if he types some kind of name that already exists, then he cannot choose that specific name. So what I want to do is I want to go inside my jQuery code up here and say that I want to run the jQuery code each time I write something inside the input. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a selector. I'm going to go and select the input we have down here. So I'm just going to say input. Then I'm going to say dot key up, meaning that each time I write something inside the input, it's going to go ahead and run whatever's inside this parentheses here. So I'm going to say we have a function, parentheses, curly brackets. And then the first thing we're going to do inside the curly brackets is getting the value of what I actually inserted inside the input. So I'm going to say we have a variable called name which is equal to dollar sign parentheses, double quotes, input. So we're basically just getting the actual value from the input. Then we're going to say dot val, which means that we get the actual value. Then underneath here, I want to run the actual post function inside Ajax. So we want to do the same thing as when we wrote the get function, which is dollar sign dot post parentheses, semicolon. Then inside the parentheses, we need to do it slightly different than the get function because using the get function, we could only have two parameters. Inside the post function, we can have three parameters. So the first one is going to be the path to the actual file that we want to load in, which right now we haven't created yet because I want to create something else than the text document here. So I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to go ahead and link to a file called suggestions.php which again, like I said, we're going to go ahead and create in just a second. Then the second parameter is going to be the data that I want to pass on to suggestions.php using a post method. Again, like I said, when we use the post function inside Ajax, we want to allow the user to do something inside our website using Ajax. So we can actually allow for them to pass on data using the Ajax request. So the second one here is going to be the actual data that we pass on. So the way we do that is by writing curly brackets. And then just to make sure it looks nice, I'm going to go and move this down to the next line. And inside the curly brackets, we can write the data that I want to pass on. Now, right now, I just have one piece of data, which is name up here. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the first data has a name as suggestion, colon, 
and then a variable called name. So right now I'm passing on the name variable to my document called suggestions.php. Now the third parameter inside the post function is going to be exactly the same as inside the get function, which means that we can actually choose to return data and a status that shows us if we did actually do this correctly. So inside the parentheses down here, right after the curly bracket, we're gonna add the third parameter the exact same way as we did with the get function, meaning I'm gonna go and write a function. And then inside the function parentheses, I'm gonna go ahead and include data, comma, status. And again, these are actually optional. I just decided to include them in order to show you guys so we can actually get the data and the status. So inside the function, I want to actually get the result from this post function here and insert it inside our text paragraph down here called ID test. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing, which is I'm gonna use a selector, double quotes. Then I'm gonna go ahead and say we have test. Again, we need to make sure we include a hashtag in front of it. Dot HTML, parentheses, semicolon. Then we want to get the data and insert inside the paragraph down here called test. Now I'm gonna go ahead and skip the actual status. So I'm not gonna alert it out because this actually runs each time we click a button inside the input. So it would actually alert out a status each time I click a button, which gets quite annoying after a while. So I won't do this till the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and open up a new file because now we need to actually create this file called suggestions.php, which does something with the data that the user actually typed in to the website and then returns the data immediately so we can do something with the data. So inside the new file, I'm gonna go ahead and save it as suggestions.php. And again, I need to mention here that we don't have to do this using PHP code or a PHP document. You can do this using a text document, an HTML document, or a JavaScript document, or any kind of document you might have inside your server. I just decided to use a PHP file because I think it's easier to actually do what I need to do in this episode to show you guys. So inside the PHP file, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my PHP tags. And inside the PHP tags, I'm gonna go ahead and create a list of names because we need to actually check while the user is typing if the name already exists inside our server or inside a database or something. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a PHP variable called existing names. I'm gonna set it equal to a PHP array, which has a list of names inside of it. So I'm gonna say we have Daniel, comma. I'm gonna say we have Dennis, comma. I'm gonna say we have Danny. And I'm gonna go ahead and say we have something like Jane. Then below here, I'm gonna go ahead and check if we do actually have a post method that we passed on from a jQuery code, which we actually did. If we go back to the index file, you guys can see we have a post method called suggestion, which is equal to name, which in this case is equal to whatever we typed inside the input field. So I need to actually get this post method inside my PHP code. Now, before we do that, I need to actually check if we do actually have a post method. So I'm gonna write an if statement and insert a function called is set parentheses and then we're gonna go ahead and check for a dollar sign underscore post method, brackets, single quotes, and then our post method was called suggestion, like so. So right now we've got the value of suggestion down here, which is again, equal to name. And inside the if statement, I'm gonna go ahead and set the post method equal to a variable, just to make it easier. So I'm gonna say we have a variable called name, which is equal to dollar sign underscore post, brackets, single quotes, suggestion, like so. So now that we have the names that we want to check for if they already exist, and we have the name that we typed in inside the input field, and now need to actually loop through this array up here and check if the name actually matches any of these data inside the array. Because if it matches, I want to show the user that we already have the name existing inside the database. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a for each loop, which is used for arrays. Then inside the for each loop, I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a variable called existing names, which is the array we have up there. And then I'm gonna say as existing name without the S, meaning that each time I write variable existing name inside the for each loop, it's gonna to refer to each piece of data we have inside the loop. So I'm gonna go inside the for each loop and each time I loop out the array, I 
I want to check if the name that they typed in matches anything inside the array. So I'm going to say we have a if statement. Inside the if statement, I want to check for a string position, parentheses. Now the string position basically tells us if whatever we type inside the input matches anything inside the array we have up there and the position of the actual string inside the array. So if we were to actually get a true result, it means that the string already exists inside the array. If you get a false result, then the string does not exist inside the array. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have existing name inside as the first parameter inside this function here. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert variable name inside the second parameter. Then I'm going to check if it's not equal to false, because if it's not equal to false, then the name I typed in exists inside the array. And then I need to write out the name that it matches inside the array. So I'm going to go ahead and say we want to echo. And I want to echo out the existing name, which means that it's the actual name that it matches. Then afterwards, I want to echo out a break just to make sure we go to the next line if I were to actually have more than one match inside the array. So now if I save this, I can go inside my browser, refresh. And if I start typing something like Daniel, you guys can see that we get Daniel, Dennis, and Danny. If we were to keep writing something like A, then you guys can see it doesn't match Dennis anymore. So not only gives me Daniel and Danny, and if I keep writing, you guys can see at the end, we have Daniel. So we can actually see that there is a name called Daniel inside our server. Again, one more quick fix here. If you guys are interested, if I were to actually delete this again, we're gonna get a error message. So I need to go back inside my code to fix that error message by saying that we also want to check if the actual name up here is empty. Like so. And if it's not empty, then we want to actually run this for each loop down here. Because if I were to actually delete everything again, then the string position down here doesn't have a second parameter because there's nothing inside the input. And then it's gonna give me an error message. So just to make sure we don't get that error message, I'm just gonna go ahead and include this empty function in here. So now if I were to go back inside the website, refresh, you guys can see once I start typing something and then delete it again, now we have no errors. So this is basically how we can use the get and post functions inside jQuery Ajax. And again, just to mention some of the differences between the two, the get function is used to actually get data from the database. Typically, if the data is something that's not sensitive, meaning that we just want to you know, get some random data that everyone can see inside the website. If we were to use the post method, it might be because I have some more sensitive data that should not be shown inside the website. Or if it's because the user have some kind of input like we just did here, I type something inside my website, then we can use the post method. So this is basically what a get and post function is inside jQuery Ajax. Some of you guys have actually given me suggestions to what to do in the next couple of episodes. So I'll actually go ahead and do a couple of those episodes. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and go into JavaScript Ajax. So if you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.